everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel. This right here is the SD to IEC and Epix Faso cartridge. Now I did show in the previous video how to build one of these so if you're interested in seeing the build process be sure to check that out. But for today we're just going to see how it functions and performs. Now I'm not going to go into a deep dive on how the SD to IEC itself works. I mean I have had this one down here for the past couple of years and it's only recently that I found some software that takes full advantage of it. So I want to have that in a separate video because um, I don't want it to be lost in the video on this particular device. So what we're going to need is a SD card. Now it does need to be formatted as FAT32. So let's do that now. All right, so we'll just make sure our SD card is formatted as FAT32. Just do a quick format there. You can also have separate partitions uh, if you really want to. I'm not going to bother going into that. And from there, you can pretty much, if you want, you can throw on like a single program file or disk image. Uh, I think it works with pretty much all types of disk images. So D64, D64. Uh, D81 and D71 uh, and also just single program files. Let's just throw a single program file on there just so we can demonstrate what it looks like on the Commodore itself. So we'll plug this into the serial port. This goes in the cartridge port. Our SD card is in. Let's take a look. And this is what we're greeted with. So it looks pretty standard apart from the fast load bit. And that comes from the Epix part of this cartridge. So we do have full Epix fast load commands available as well, or DOS wedge commands as they're often called. You do have a menu, which you can get to by hitting the pound symbol and enter. And uh, there's some basic options in there. I think the only one you'd really want to use is if you wanted to disable fast load, if it's causing an issue, uh, with a game, uh, but the cartridge itself does have a reset button and it also has a separate reset button for the serial interface if you just want to reset the disk drive itself, uh, even though technically these aren't a disk drive emulator. That's a story for another day. Uh, other functions we've got, uh, the slash command will actually count as load. So if I do slash star, that'll load the first, you know, program file on the disk or the SD card. And as you can see, the loading was pretty quick. Uh, without fast load, that takes about a minute to load uh, off an SD to IEC. So pretty quick and yeah, everything appears to be working just fine. And I didn't need to use the power switch because I've got a reset button that I just mentioned. Anyway, uh, you can also do other things in Epic's uh, fast load. For instance, Commodore and the run stop key will also load star or the first file on the SD card. And there are a few other commands. Let's just reset that because I don't really want to load it again. The other one is the percent symbol uh, that loads a machine language program. So it's the same as loading star comma eight comma one, whereas the slash command just loads star comma eight. And obviously you've got to type in run. The other command that you might use is the at symbol, which if you just type it on its own, it'll just give you the status of the uh, SD device. Well, pretty much whatever's on the serial bus and device eight. Uh, you can also use it with at I if you want to run an initialize command. So there's no special setup for the SD card as long as it's formatted as FAT32. It should just work. And yeah, you can throw on a single program file. Let me just grab my fully populated SD card rather than going back and copying everything over again. We'll power this on. And if we do just the dollar sign command, it'll load the directory. And if I load star, you'll see that we've got the Commodore file browser, um, which is commonly called FB64. This is pretty standard with the SD to IAC. I think you might even use it on the Pi 1541, uh, but it's not the greatest. Uh, there is a better file commander 
um, out there. And as I said, I'll save that for the next video because I want to look at that a little bit more closely. For this one, we're just focusing on the Epic's fast load part pretty much. So again, we can navigate through here and once again, back to our 007 game. And the load speed's basically the same as if you loaded it from the uh, basic prompt. There's no real difference there. The other thing that we can do now that we've got directories on this SD card is we can actually go through the directories without using the file browser if you prefer to do such a thing. So using the at command, we can do CD for change directory. And we can say, I think there's a directory called C64. And if I do another list, we can see that we're now in the C64 directory. Now, just doing a reset of the Commodore 64 without resetting the SD to IEC will still leave you in that directory. So if you want, you can hit the reset button on the SD to IEC, and then that'll back you back out to where you originally started. Uh, you can also do uh, absolute directories. So if we wanted to change directory to C64 slash games, issue a command, and now we're in the games folder, which is under the C64 folder. Uh, to go back a directory, um, yeah, CD back arrow. And now we've moved back there. So that's also part of the Epic's fast load functions. That's not a part of original uh, Commodore Basic. So if I were to attempt to change a directory in regular Commodore Basic, um, yeah, it doesn't know what I'm talking about, Willis. Now, two things about the device itself that I'm not a huge fan of. Let me just pull it out of here. One of them I mentioned in the last video is having to rely on soldering either pin headers or a little connector to connect the uh, DIN cable to. Uh, as I said, I'd much rather just have a DIN socket here and then you just plug in a cable. Um, considering there's a lot more cables out there and you don't have to stuff around building your own. The other thing that I'm not a big fan of is although this has jumpers here to select the device ID, I'd much rather have switches. Um, and you know, the switches wouldn't take up that much more space. Stuffing around with little jumpers um, just doesn't really seem worth it when there's room for putting in a dip switch. So jumpers on there. So I think that selects it as device nine, but what I'd rather have and something that I've already made up dip switches. Now I did sort of fudge the used to get them on there because the pin spacing isn't the same, but yeah, much easier to use. I don't have to stuff around looking for a jumper and trying to get it on and off. You just flick a switch. So that's one of the other changes that I wouldn't mind seeing in a future version. Um, you'll notice this one, I've put a right angled uh, pin header on here because it just sort of sits flatter. Um, I think there is a case uh, or two available to 3D print for these. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, they sort of take into account all these little buttons and switches everywhere. But I mean, I'm not so worried about having a case for these kind of things. I'm happy just to use them bare like this. Now, why have I lost video? This is unplugged. So yeah, I'd rather see dip switches. So it's just much easier to use. So of course it's now set to device nine, I think. So it's gonna give me a device not present if I try and use one of these shortcuts, but if I try and load star from device nine, maybe it's not set to device nine. Definitely not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Didn't swap the SD card over. Uh, let's put this one in here. We'll turn it off first. Turn it back on. All right. Shortcut mode won't work, but yeah, load from device nine. Everything works as normal. Now, the reason you'd want to do that is if you've got, you know, an actual disk drive hooked up or a printer maybe, um, or you want to copy between a disk drive and the SD to IEC, something that I'll also show in 
video that just focuses on the SD to IEC part itself. So enough about that. Um, that's just a couple of changes that I wouldn't mind seeing. Now I did look at the page where you can order this PCB and it doesn't seem like they've open sourced or provided the design file for these, which is a bit weird because I mean, it is the SD to IEC is an open source project. And I mean, the Epic's fast load is also kind of open source. I mean, you can build a fast load cartridge just by itself if you choose to. So I don't know why it's not just available from uh, that circuit board manufacturer's website as well. Uh, obviously the author may have not provided the files. Um, so that's something else I would like to see, I guess, for people that want to, you know, modify their own board. Anyway, I don't want to get into licenses and different ones for open source projects. That's uh, not really the focus of this video. So we'll move on. Um, I think that's kind of all I really wanted to show about the SD to IEC and Epic's fast load cartridge. Now, if you've already got an SD to IEC and some of them look different to this, they look like a little Commodore disk drive. I probably wouldn't bother with the Epic's fast load and SD to IEC cartridge. And the reason being is you can build an Epic's fast load cart, uh, for, you know, half the price and take it less than half the time. And that'll give you the same thing as what this would. Also, if you've got a Commodore 64 with Jiffy DOS installed, uh, that's probably even faster than Epic's fast load. So if you've got Jiffy DOS on one of these, um, yeah, it's probably not worth messing around with the Epic's fast load, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Jiffy DOS gives you pretty much the same DOS wedges, and it's probably a little bit faster than the Epic's fast load and probably more compatible. So there's, I mean, there is a good use for this, but uh, if you've got other options, uh, consider those as well. Anyway, that is about it that I wanted to go over with this particular cartridge. But as I said, I do have quite a few things to show with the SD to IEC itself. So that could be either on this thing or a standalone one, but I'm gonna say that for the next video, uh, just so it doesn't get lost with all the stuff that I'm going on about with this particular uh, device. So um, until next time, thank you for watching the Retro Channel. A massive thank you to all the channel supporters and thanks everyone for subscribing, watching the videos, leaving nice comments, all that kind of stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.